as a family-owned and operated company dedicated to making grain handling equipment has morphed into a one-stop shop for producers around the globe. From grain handling to bins, Sukup Manufacturing Company has continued to grow and innovate while remaining true to their roots, keeping their headquarters where it all started in a small town in North Iowa. Good evening and welcome to Rural America Live. I'm Janet Atkinson. While the leaders at Sukup are proud to have a positive impact on farmers, the agriculture industry as a whole, and families with products that help feed the world. Well, tonight, one lucky caller will win an OtterBox cooler with Sukup swag inside. Thanks, shirts and hats, and of course, all the goodies that you see there. Now, have your phone ready for when we open up the phone lines so you can call and ask your questions and have a chance to win. Now, here with us tonight is none other than President and CEO Steve Sukup and Chief Administrative Officer and General Counsel Emily Schmidt. Now, thank you both for taking the time to join us here this evening. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Look so, forward to it. Steve, t let's start with you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Give us a background here. Well, I was fortunate to grow up on the farm, uh, watch my dad take an idea into a local uh, weld shop and come out with, with an idea that went on to be, have a patent. And so I was able to tie agriculture and then manufacturing. I love making and welding and running a torch. I learned that when I was in sixth grade. And so I stayed with that as I I uh, also went into industrial engineering. Oh, wow. So we can assume that some of your elbow grease went into some of the bins that are out there now. Yes, yes, you can. So uh, <laughs> always proud of them. I'm glad to hear that. Now, Emily, tell us about yourself. Yeah, I went to school at Iowa State for business. And then, although Steve says never say never, <laughs> uh, I was also a graduate of University of Iowa for my law degree. So fast forward, uh, been with the company for 10 years full time, but running around the the halls for, for just over 30, we'll say. Okay. Uh, mother of two and, and glad to be back at the company. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Well, thank you both again for taking the time to join us tonight. So Steve, let's start with you. Uh, what products are important to the American farmer today? Well, right now it's uh, definitely the grain bins and our grain dryers. Uh, mm -hmm. With the grain bins, we've seen you know the volatility and the pricing that our customers see with uh, corn and soybeans and rice and all the different products or grains that we store mm -hmm. uh, with the grain bin, they're able to control their own destiny. So they have that opportunity. There's usually a two or three months that you get some high prices. Mm -hmm. And if you have the grain bin and have it stored, you can take advantage of that. It certainly has changed a lot in the years. Yes, no, and uh, especially with all the processing going on yeah. now, the ethanol plants, soy crushed plants, uh, we need storage on the farm 365 days a year. It's not like just the old days of having a semi take it to the river. Right. Now, Emily, how is Suka Manufacturing contributing to jobs and, of course, manufacturing for Iowa? Well, as many of America knows that Iowa is all about agriculture, but yeah. the number one GDP is actually manufacturing. Wow. So we're, we're so lucky to be at the crossroads of both uh, manufacturing and ag. And, we're rooted in a town of 1,200, but we employ over 500. And that's something that we like to come in every day. Uh, we established a new office building just eight years ago, seems like yesterday. Uh, but right in rural America, we, em we employ our customers uh, as farmers, our employees are farmers, and we know what they'll need. I love the, the farmers building things that farmers need. Yeah. You know, so you get. They, sure, they, they definitely care about it. I would so, say they yes. care about it. You probably get some good feedback from them as well, too, along the way throughout the process. Well, they're always bringing in different uh, ideas. Uh, one of our new products that Randy will be visiting about is our paddle sweep and uh -huh. uh, just ideas like that that can really make uh, farming more efficient and safer. That's pretty cool. Now, of course, family owned and operated, and within that dynamic, well, it sets a loyal employee base, and the workforce has crossed generations. People across North Iowa, the United States, globally appreciate the opportunities that they're finding at Sukup Manufacturing. So with that, here's a look at what's happening today for those who spend their days involved and even intrigued by what they're doing while on the clock. My husband and I uh, farm and I know Sukup has plays a large role within the ag industry and so it really enticed me um, being from North Iowa and relocating back here after college. Um, I grew up on a farm, my parents farm as well, and so um, those are my roots and what I know. It's hard to believe what started it all was, was a little logger on a drill, you know. Um, it's pretty surreal just looking around 
and trying to, you know, acknowledge the fact that that's, that's all it took to get this large ball rolling. It took up everybody kind of wears. I uh, had a multitude of things. I oversee the production aspect of things, the satellite locations um, on the production side with uh, their managers and then uh, uh, oversee plant personnel as well with HR. Uh, sitting, in, sitting in my interview and I said, you know, Steve, I'm going to run this place. And then he just gave me the old Steve laugh and I guess, you know, I told him uh, maybe I was right. So kind of weird how things happen. I think a lot of people would be really surprised at our capabilities in-house. Um, you hear comments like that all the time from, from outsiders that come in for a plant tour. They just really have no idea what, what we're capable of here. We're looking at a very strong year this year, especially in the commercial market. Um, we're seeing a lot of interest in uh, paddle sweeps, uh, dryers, uh, material handling has been great this year, so we're looking for a busy year. Basically, Tool and I has a hand in everything. Anything that is produced out of Sookup is coming from either a, a die or a weld fixture, or it's coming from lasers and it has to be bent in uh, manual dies. All of that is produced, designed, and engineered in-house. When it first comes to learning how to new, do a new item, I love just kind of getting in there like, okay, here's this part. How is this going to go together? I love seeing how the different items come together to create the new product. I've been here for seven and a half years. Uh, I enjoy the freedom of uh, being in control of a project from start to finish. It's very rewarding to see uh, a project that started just on a piece of paper uh, come to life. I think the big thing that helps us strive to be successful is that we don't have a lot of roadblocks in front of us. The nice thing about you know working here is you have Steve and stuff making decisions along with engineering, pushing new things. Um, there's not a whole lot of roadblocks that you have to encompass when you're trying to uh, you know, incorporate new things. You're trying to figure out what the next big thing in the market is going to be. Tying all of those products together, uh, creating new and, and, and better ways for our customers to, to not only get the job done, but to be able to give them back more of that quality time uh, that they that they have craved but haven't been able to do that in that in the kind of heavy uh, drying and, and, and farming uh, uh, portions of the year and that's one of my favorite things is to be able to equip people with those products that will just give them time to do the things they really want to be doing you know as opposed to the things they need to be doing to keep that legacy of Steve Eugene and Charles of being hands-on with our employees. Sookups are looking into the future to see, hey, what can we do to maintain where we're at and to grow in the future? I don't think it's even possible to determine what you would see in the next 60 years because it has changed so much in 15 that I can't even imagine where we would be. I, I've said that over and over again. Um, I don't. I don't think there's too many companies out there that, that you can interact with the CEO and, and three generations of the family-owned company on, you know, on the daily. And genuine conversation, um, I don't think you're going to find that anywhere else. 60 years is exciting. It's something to be very, very proud of. And um, you can see it on, on everybody's face. We continue to grow each year. Um, is more successful. You see more products that engineers are creating, we're developing, we're designing, and we're manufacturing. So for, for all of us to see kind of um, the growth, uh, the start to finish product. Anybody can bend steel. Anybody can, uh, to an extent, put them all together to be able to deliver a great result, you know? From us, we, we really care about this from a holistic standpoint. You know, not only not only do do we touch it from a raw material standpoint, we're uh, we're employing you know 850 people here. We we're running it through all of our own machines. We care about the product that we have here. We care about the people that are using it. It's it's more than just a number to us. It's more than just a, uh, a a finished goods inventory calculation. You know, we are in the business of providing the very products that keep you know the lifeblood uh, of our economy going, and we take that very seriously. And we care about the quality, we care about the people, and we care about the people that are buying it.
Well, that's certainly kind of fun to see your feedback from your staff, your employees. And we had a little uh, chat here between, in the, the meantime. You've got kind of an extra little incentive that's even coming up next year. Well, next year we're working on our dealer incentive trip. But one of the special things is uh, when an employee reaches 10 years with Sukut Manufacturing, uh, we offer them a trip and their spouse uh, to Hawaii. Oh, wow. And so next year, we've been doing it every six years. Uh -huh. And so we'll probably have close to uh, 130, 140 uh, individuals that are qualified now uh, heading to Hawaii or just getting back next year at this time. So I think we're all looking forward to it. Well, that is pretty exciting. Are you guys going to make the trip as well, too? Well, you know, <laughs> somebody has, it, has to do it, but uh, we, we do volunteer for that. Now, of course, family farms, they've changed a lot since Sukup first started 60 years ago. Farms are getting bigger. Uh, talk about the reason behind why farms are getting so much larger. Well, it's like all operations. You have to look at your efficiencies. Uh, more technology has helped our uh, customers mm -hmm. grow larger. Uh, when we started in grain bins, we were around uh, 10,000 bushels per grain bin. Now we're 50,000 bushels per grain bin. And so they have more dollars locked up uh, into those facilities. Uh, the grain dryers are bigger and faster. Uh, they used to be like 300 bushels uh, per hour if you dried in the bin. Now we have dryers up to seven and 10,000 bushels per hour. So uh, efficiency, uh, making sure that our uh, customers have more uh, dollars to work with is important. And it's having the resources to make sure they have that is certainly why they also keep coming back to you, I would imagine. Yes, and <laughs> we have to have good quality products, yeah. and that's one that we've really uh, prided ourselves and be able to listen to our customer. Well, as he said, feeding the world, it comes through many different needs, and part of that is serving those agribusinesses who are part of the supply chain as well and making sure that they do have what they need. With that, let's take another look. Changes in, in bin sizes and, and handling sizes, you know, over the past 63 years or thereabouts, um, you know, back in the 70s, a, a average size farm bin was probably, you know, less than 10,000 bushel, around 10,000 bushel. Today, we see uh, bin sizes on farm up to 100 foot, 105 foot in diameter, um, 750,000 bushel. I have been in actually bin scheduling for over a dozen years, and I've seen the same thing. The bin sizes have gotten quite a bit larger. Uh, when I first started uh, scheduling bins back in 09, our regular size was like a 33 or 36 foot bin. Now we're up to 48, 54, 60 foot bins that are on the farm. So yeah, we're seeing an, an increase. Um, you know, farmers are seeing that storing does pay, you know, to hold your corn for a, a better price. And uh, so, yeah, they are going a little larger, or they're thinking about the future, too. So, um, so yeah, farm storage has gotten bigger over the last couple of years. A lot of that uh, is due to the changing in the, in the industry and the seed. I mean, with new hybrids, you have increased bushels. Farmers are getting larger. Commercial elevators are getting larger. Some of that, a lot of that's through consolidation, not just the increase in yields. But, uh, you know, it used to be you hauled all your, your grain to town in a wagon. Now you have semis. Um, you know, you don't need a co-op or an elevator every five miles, so although it's convenient. It's not necessary today. Um, so when you bring the more bushels in and, and more acres into one location, you obviously have to increase all your receiving capabilities, drying capabilities, and storage capabilities at that facility. Obviously, the, the family farm and stuff, they're expanding, so they need bigger, you know, bigger products. And we're also getting into the commercial market a lot more. Uh, so we have to obviously expand to satellite locations, you know, throughout Iowa, uh, especially the, the, the northern part here. We look at it as... What else can you buy that'll have an, a return of investment within three to five years, and it's gonna last the next 60? There's not many things you can buy. There's not a car, a tractor, buildings, but that bin is gonna stay there for the next 60 years. So if you can get it paid off within three to five years, I mean, that's nothing but income from there on after. So when you show them that ROI, it makes sense to them. We need that increased bushels. Uh, to, to feed the world and to feed our livestock and take care of the world's population. I and mean, that's what we that's what we do here at Circup is, is keep the grain in condition and take care of that so it's, we're able to feed the world.
certainly telling the good story of agriculture. And on that note, we were talking earlier that uh, you've taken the size of the grain bins and really kind of cranked it up a notch. We did. And uh, even I have to say that I never thought we'd see a 2.2 million bushel bin. And uh, we built one two years ago up to Golden Grain Energy in Mason City, Iowa at an ethanol plant. But then when you think of it, that's only 22 days uh, worth of supply for them. So they need the storage, but each that bin is filled by family farms. Uh -huh. So that's uh, sort of the key that, uh, again, uh, we need storage uh, 365 days a year out there. That's pretty impressive, I would say, without a doubt. <laughs> <laughs> now, Emily, also talk about how Sukup is contributing to jobs and also manufacturing across the Hawkeye State. Well, you know, everything is just changing for uh, so much of the workforce issues, and we're expanding to multiple different communities around North Iowa. We just went to our uh, third community outside of Sheffield, and all of them have manufacturing now. And we're seeing a lot of strong manufacturing workforce and interest all over the state. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're really digging in, and we're seeing a lot of great response, and our, our labor market has never been better for us. And it has a lot to do with out in the community, the people that we work with, like Steve and Randy. Uh -huh. And um, we're excited to get, get into new markets so we can also you know, deliver that value for our customers. I would imagine the feedback that you're also getting from these rural towns that you're working with is just overwhelming. Yes, and they're all excited to, to have expansions. We've, you know, unfortunately seen some manufacturing go out of business that we've taken over. And we filled up and are in operation within 60 days, fully staffed for our latest expansion in Clear Lake. That's pretty exciting. Very. Glad to see that. Glad to hear that continuing to go. Uh, anything else on that point that you want to add? Because you've seen a lot of the changes take place through the decades that Sukup has been in business. Well, we've uh, you know grown the 10 times larger over the last 20 years. Uh, the last couple of years with the COVID, we never, you know, employment really tightened up. But yeah. just expanding out into these other uh, communities has really given us some more access to more employees, and it's been very tremendously successful. Glad to hear it. Well, we're going to continue this conversation, but before we go to break, we're going to also open our phone lines. Now, that number to call, 877-731-6733. And if you call in, you could be a lucky winner tonight and receive an Otter Box cooler with Sukup swag inside. So again, that number, 877-731-6733. Stay with us. We have more to come right here on Rural America Live. Welcome back to Rural America Live with Sukup Manufacturing Company. Now, again, those phone lines are open, so give us a call. The number is 877-731-6733. The team is ready, and they're waiting to answer your questions. And tonight, of course, one lucky caller is going to win an OtterBox cooler with Sukup swag inside. Think shirts, hats, and of course, all the good stuff that you see there on your screen. Well, now we also want to welcome Sukup Manufacturing's Material Handling Director, that is Randy Marks. And Randy, thank you for taking the time to join us here this evening as well. Well, thank you. Appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely. So give us kind of a little bit of background on yourself. Well, I'm from a family farm, too, uh, located just uh, in northern Iowa. St. Ansgar is where I grew up. I uh, wanted to stay in agriculture, went to Iowa State University, got my degree in ag systems technology, started off in engineering at Sukup Manufacturing, so saw some of the designs and things come to life and some of the innovations that we had. And, and here I am today uh, kind of heading up the whole material handling line and been with the company 22 years now. Wow, congratulations. Well, and thank congratulations you. to yeah. you guys too. Now, of course, 22 years, and of course, you also said that you still farm yourself. So that's got to be kind of a, a good thing for your heart that you're seeing some of those things that you're able to implement on your own farm. It, give, it does. It gives me a unique perspective of what's, uh, what needs to be uh, happening out in the, the fields and keeping our farmers so that they're coming home safe to their families mm -hmm. at night. So. Absolutely. We definitely want safety to be front and center. Now, Emily, economics in the heartland, whenever we're talking about that, what is Sukup doing to contribute and overcome some of the challenges that we're seeing in our, our heartland, our rural communities? Well, as always, there's always change. That's the only constant there is. And so that we're seeing, you know, baby boomers retiring. The labor shortage is affecting all family farms. And there's so many startups nowadays for coming up with ideas, just like Grandpa did 60 years ago and trying to navigate all of that. So Sukup Manufacturing is really trying to you know, meet the needs by innovating and keeping on the forefront of that. And we have many more inventions down the pipe. We just had a patent dinner with all of our inventors as well to celebrate 
all the you know creativity the past couple years. That's pretty cool. A patent dinner. I didn't think about that, but that sounds like a pretty fun time to celebrate. Absolutely. Yes, it is. It's one of those that you can recognize different individuals with uh, ideas that they uh, come in with, and uh, you like to be able to take a moment, step back, and say, okay, we really put something down. You know, it's nice to have it on paper, and it's practice that uh -huh. uh, we see out there in the field. That's pretty cool. Now, again, our phone lines are open, and we would love to hear from you. 877-731-6733 is the number to call. And Tom from Ohio is on the line with us. Tom, go ahead with your question or comment. My question is, uh, do you, does Suckup uh, go put solar on top of the bins or anything? Since, are, since the bins are high up in the air, it seems to me like it would be an ideal place for a solar panel. Well, we have taken a little bit of look at uh, solar. We actually, at Suka Manufacturing, have 10% uh, of our energy from solar. Oh, wow. And uh, we built our own, what they call the racking system, underneath the uh, solar panels. Uh, we made our stiffeners and then uh, uh, C-channels for the... Uh, metal to be able to hold the panels and so it is one that we have an interest in uh, solar uh, we will uh, you know keep that in mind of uh, at least being able to run some of your uh, equipment or small fans off of some solar and see what the uh, possibilities would be there well, it sounds like a pretty good idea yes. look forward to seeing more on that now tell us also about the supply chain that you guys are having you have and the challenges that you've seen and also how you're tackling those challenges today well we did have a few speed bumps with the uh, uh, supply chain, uh, some of the reducers, our electronics department has probably hit the most with some of the chips, but it's one that uh, we try and source as much as we can here mm -hmm. in the United States. Uh, all of our steel is uh, made here in the U.S. steel. Uh, we visit our suppliers like in Pennsylvania for the electronics uh, equipment, and so uh, we, we maintain a pretty good uh, steady s supply and, uh, you know, being a good, reliable uh, customer and working close with our vendors pays off in years like this. Absolutely. And, of course, we're getting ready to head into springtime. How are we looking as far as uh, folks maybe doing some planning and plotting here? Uh, we've been working hard at it. Uh, we are all set for a good, uh, solid year. Uh, we've got steel uh, purchased ahead. Uh, our electronics uh, were geared up uh, uh, to meet our uh, goals for mm -hmm. our forecasting. Well, good. Glad to hear that. Now, we also are going to go back to the phone lines. Tom, I forgot to give you a big thank you. Tom from Ohio, thanks for that call. The phone lines are open, 877-731-6733. And we have a caller from Kentucky now. Paul, go ahead with your question or comment. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I was just curious, do they make anything for corn silage? Make anything for corn silage? Uh, not... Yes. Not really. Uh, we, we don't make anything for the corn silage. Uh, we do have, uh, uh, I know there's one uh, grower we work with that he dries the, brings in the corn and dries the corn and sells it to five different uh, bourbon places, but that's as close as we get. So, uh, but uh, uh, nothing for silage. A little bit of the fermenting process, but in a different direction. Different, different direction. <laughs> and well, Paul, thank you very much for that question. Of course, he's calling from Kentucky, so that does fit in very right. well there. So thank you, Paul. Again, phone lines 877-731-6733. Randy, we want to bring you back into the conversation. Now, if you would tell us about uh, some of the new technology technology that's available and how it keeps changing over time for you guys. Well, yeah, there's a lot of new technology at Sukup Manufacturing. We're always innovating, uh, trying to come up with new ideas. We've got some new products out there with the paddle sweep, like Steve mentioned, uh, our touch screen control system for our mixed flow dryers. That's a uh, very innovative technology we got out there. We're working on some other things that uh, we can't really discuss today, but they are coming in the future uh -huh. that uh, that uh, the team's been very uh, very in instrumental in trying to get uh, things to all tie together on the farm. Would you, I was going to say, would you say you guys have kind of become a one-stop shop? Yes, we are. Our our growth has is, is brought us into the commercial side. Like everybody says, the things, the f machines are getting bigger, the bins are getting bigger. Um, we want to make sure we're keeping up with demand, so we've got a lot of things out there uh, with the paddle sweep to clean out the bins, make it fast, efficient, and to take care of some of those labor shortages that we're seeing on the farms as well. All right. I know folks appreciate that. Well, of course, speaking of that, keeping up with technology, Sukup Leadership does know the value of the latest technology, making sure that it's available right there on the farm. With that, let's take another look.
I would say traditionally in technology, the ag market has kind of just lagged behind um, in general, probably about a decade. You know, when, when we first saw smartphones, uh, we didn't actually start to see kind of the cloud computing side of things until much later. As, uh, as technology progresses though, uh, one of the other major reasons that, that uh, it has been behind market in general is because of the price points of all these different technologies as connectivity increases, whether that's mobile um, or, or just different areas for infrastructure. There are many ways in which now uh, farmers of all sizes and producers and commercial entities are able to get access uh, uh, to the same technology that was once completely unaffordable to them at, at a reasonable price point now. We're always trying to make things uh, flow a lot better with uh, the current uh, manufacturing that comes out. So we're always trying to, if we can automate things, we'll do that. We'll try to keep robot fixtures in there, uh, robot welding fixtures. We have a few robots that actually handle the material in three different die sets. Um, we use pneumatic, hydraulic, and everything. We're always up to date on training. Uh, all of our CAD and CAM softwares are constantly evolving, so we gotta stay fresh on that. Uh, the machining industry itself is constantly moving forward just with new technology, new processes. Uh, so you gotta stay fresh on that. So my welding background stems from 15 years ago. Uh, I, was, I was actually painting at the time here and I was given an opportunity to go to, to robot school. They needed a programmer um, for the robots in house. Everything that I learned for, for welding was through robotics and, and you had to essentially learn perfect welding. So uh, parameters, work angles, gun angles, travel speeds, everything just had to be on point. So blessing in disguise, didn't see it that way at first. Um, so robotics really got me into the welding department. It was really good being, being able to be involved in those things and working side by side with engineers to kind of figure out, okay, this works, this doesn't work, what do we need to do different? Um, even just as small as a, what bolt do we use here? But in the end, it was great getting, getting to be a part of those new products and seeing them through. So, you know, what's the future? We, we, we talked about uh, uh, technology and automation. That's a massive component of what's coming. You know, this device talking to that device, telling it what to do, um, you know, responding in real time, uh, uh, tools to be able to manage supply chain and logistics within the site. Uh, you know, more big data that goes into that. That's absolutely a massive component of it. Um, as consolidation happens within the farm markets, you know, it, it, whether you like that or you don't like that, it, it seems to be a reality. Uh, the, the grain bins are getting bigger, they're getting heavier, they're getting more commercialized. Um, we're, we're, we're seeing that in our own booking numbers these days, just looking at, uh, you know, the shift in, in where it had been from small farm bins, you know, 10 years ago to what that looks like now and kind of the larger farm bins or the larger commercial bins. It's more, more, more every time and so continually making sure that our products are adapted to be able to fit that scale and application, you know, is something that we're very passionate about because we, you know, just like everybody else, we don't want to get it left behind. We, we want to make sure that we have what we need at the right time, you know, for the right application. A lot of technology and feedback featured there. Randy, uh, you mentioned this just a little bit earlier also. Talk about the paddle sweep. What exactly is that? So the paddle sweep was uh, first and uh, kind of came out in 2015, more in our commercial uh, lines. We saw the industry, the OSHA changed some of the rules on us, uh, making it very hard for the mm -hmm. commercial people to get in there and clean out their bins. So, so we developed the paddle sweep. Uh, basically an automated system so people don't have to get in the bins. It sweeps out the bin, uh, basically gets it down right to the floor so there's no grain left in the bin when, the, when that thing's done going around a f couple of times. So it really changed the industry on the commercial side. Mm -hmm. When we saw that need and said, hey, we can do the same thing on the farm side. So that's when we came out with the paddle sweepway uh, that we're seeing a video of here. So that's seeing uh, our first pass around the bin. Um, on the second pass, it really starts to pick up that grain. 
gets it out of there, takes it to the center. So there's really eliminates all need for people to have to get into that bin when they have any equipment running. Again, for safety reasons, we want the farmers to be, be able to get the job done with the lack of labor. Uh, it frees that up as well and gets them home safe to their families. Well, they certainly, we certainly appreciate hearing that. Of course, each year we hear of some sort of tragedy that happens to be with the grain bin on the farm. So safety is definitely something to keep in mind all the time. Now with that, we do have the phone lines open and we have Ed from Missouri on the line with us. Ed, go ahead with your question or comment. Uh, yes, I was just wanting to know more about the paddle sweep. I've heard quite a bit about it, but I, I haven't really seen how it worked. I guess that's my question. You want to go a little oh, deeper on that? Can go a little deeper. Actually, that we've got a video out on YouTube that you can go out and search. The, go to www.sukup. That's s u k u p. dot com, and we've got a link in there to get to our YouTube video. You can watch that go, watch that sweep in action and sweep out the bin. But our paddles are probably like every every eight to ten inches on the chain. Yeah, so we do weld all the chain uh, in in house. Uh, like Steve said, they're about eight inches apart, so we're always in contact with the floor. Keep that grain moving. That's the key to and the success to the paddle sweep is making sure that grain is moving and and getting taken into the center of the bin. I'm going to ask on this. So, is this something that you can have installed on a bin that you already have on the farm? That's a great question, and yes, we do get that a lot uh, at the farm shows. It is something we can install uh, on any retrofit, especially if it's a Sukup uh, power sweep. Uh, <laughs> we can certainly take that old Sukup power sweep and put this right onto it. And what kind of time frame are you looking at the folks need to, to allow for something like that to take place? Do you know on that? Yeah, right yeah. now we're, we're in the summertime. So, you know, June, July, we can still get the paddle sweeps out there and get your bins uh, up to, to speed and safe for fall harvest. All right. Well, good deal. Hopefully that tackled some of your questions there, Ed. Thank you for that call. That was Ed from Missouri. Let's go back to Tennessee now, and we have Woodrow from Tennessee on the line with us. Woodrow, go ahead with your question or comment. Yes, I just want to know, with all the grain we produce, it's great that we have a storage place, but now Ukraine being in the war, now ain't they a real large producer of wheat? And what, what all? And does China get any of it? Can you repeat that last part there just a little bit, Woodrow? Yes. Does China get any of our, our wheat and all that goes to China? And, and, and I'm great on the stuck up storage. We need to store more here. Well, with uh, Ukraine, and uh, we do have a partnership with some folks over in Ukraine. Uh, you know, it has a very large uh -huh. grain industry. Uh, they've been decimated the past uh Year and right. year and a half. Uh, I think as we looked at some of the ending stocks for corn and soybeans, it's some of the lowest levels we've seen in by, like the last five years. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think a lot of countries are looking at uh, what they can do for storage. Uh, we had some from the Middle East that are wanting grain bins so that they can store that right. they don't go through like Egypt did with that uh, spring. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, wheat deal that they had that they ran out of uh, grains and right. so I you know the U.S. is still going to be the breadbasket of the world and uh, so we just have a real opportunity here to to grow it and uh, be able to store it and then ship it to the countries when they need it and Absolutely. that's where we get the price volatilities and that's where our customers get the best prices. Now Randy also mixed flow dryers those are pretty much in demand with Sukup manufacturing as well talk about that if you would. Yeah so the mixed flow dryers uh, we've got the strongest uh, sense of, uh, options for dryers on the market today. Um, we've got we've been in the business for 25 years making our our dryers with our starting with our screens. We've got our touch scroll control uh, screen again like we talked about that technology we come back and you can operate a lot of that dryer on your cell phone so it makes it very easy for the farmers to be able to sit in their tractor cabs and monitor that dryer as they're combining those fields out there. And what is it that sets them apart from some of the other options that are out there? So the big thing with our mixed flow dryer if you look at it is our vacuum cooling system that we have at the very bottom. It's a it's a patented uh, system that we have with the screens uh, where we're bringing that grain in, we're cooling it and at the same time reclaiming the heat off the grain making it more efficient and putting that back through the burner so we're drying the rest of the grain with heat already from corn that's dry. Huh? 
good news there. Well, with that, the phone lines again are open, 877-731-6733. And we have Gary from Michigan on the line with us now. Gary, go ahead with your question or comment. Yes, uh, I was uh, just getting back from the farm show and uh, was able to go to your booth and everything. And you guys have a really, it seems like a wonderful product, uh, really stout, well-built um, compared to the other manufacturers. Uh, my question is, um, with the uh, push for on-farm storage these days, uh, what kind of protection, because it is a major investment for farmers and stuff, but what kind of protection do they offer for their material, like their hardware and stuff, you know, to, to prevent uh, from rust and stuff and the longevity of the, the uh, grain bands and uh, your uh, downspouting and stuff of that nature, uh, to, you know, for the longevity and stuff, to make it look good 15 to 20 years down the road? Well, with our grain bins, uh, we have our uh, a G90. Uh, we buy all U.S. steel, so we know exactly what we're getting for high-strength steel. We also have what we call a super shield on there, a coating that's extra onto our bin sheets, and it, we've, it's been proven to give you extra life on the bin sheets. Uh, for the hardware, again, we visit our vendors. Uh, we have what we call a JS1000 on our hardware that gives us extra extra life out there. So we really put in that we want a good looking product on there. Uh, when it's your name on the bin, you want it to look good. And we just invested in a lot of quality department personnel. So that's something that, you know, working with our local universities, we've been able to recruit and have uh, wonderful quality engineers and, and a full staff department to really delve into that quality because, as Steve said, it's it's our name on, on the bin and we want to make sure it's represented well. Absolutely. Now, Circuit Manufacturing is not a direct seller of products. They rely heavily on their dealer network. Hundreds of businesses who have worked closely alongside Circuit and developed some pretty amazing relationships all along the way. So we're looking at a very strong year this year, especially in the commercial market. Um, we're seeing a lot of interest in uh, paddle sweeps, uh, dryers, uh, material handling has been great this year. So we're looking for a busy year. We keep in contact with our dealers, you know, uh, the interest that they're seeing for from their farmers, from uh, uh, we look at the markets, see where the markets are at, whether, um, you know, corn is selling, beans are selling, um, what, you know, just the general, uh, the, what the crop did the year before. We have the best dealer network in the industry, no doubt about it. Our dealers are knowledgeable. Um, they care about the, the end user or the farmer. They want to put out a quality product and they sell themselves. And, uh, and, and they've been long time dealers for us. And so we feel like we have uh, a special connection to our dealers and we have the best dealers out there. From knowing the folks on our production floor, you know, who are, who are making Making the products to, to uh, our dealer network of products that are selling it to our end customers, making site visits, uh, doing uh, continuing education with our with our with our customers and our dealer network. It's being fully immersed in every aspect of the business, from sales to shipping to finance to legal to general administration. Um, all of it at all levels, you know, we're, we're represented in, in a ton of different areas. And uh, uh, it's, it's one of the ways that we can keep a handle on the product that we have, as well as actually say that we know what's going on uh, within the business and within industry. We're working for a good company that knows what they're doing. And at the end of the day, they treat their, their customers, their dealers right. They put out a, a solid product that people want and at the end of the day just treating people the way they need to be treated is what's going to keep you in business and making good decisions um, selling a product at the right price um, there's a lot of things that go into it but at the end of the day it's the experience of the people too um, having the people here that are going to put together a product uh, a solid product uh, a product that we can be proud of Certainly good to see that feedback that's taking place there. Any thoughts that you'd like to share following that? Well, with our dealer organization, it has been uh, fabulous because with grain bins, there are some assembly required yeah. with those. Uh, but with as much grain that's flowing through, you need dealers that can sell, install, and be able to service as well. And that's where we've got the great package. Anything else you guys would like to add? <laughs> I've had many years with them, and, yeah. and luckily for you know Hawaii, we, 
<laughs> we see them every six years in Hawaii. Uh, well, we see them all the time. Of course. But there, there's many dealers that are able to go on that trip multiple times. I haven't asked you guys, how many dealers do you guys have across the country? Do you remember that? We've probably got around 600 dealers. Okay. Uh, it's sort of the 80-20 rule, uh -huh. uh, the top 120 uh, probably do 80, 90 percent of the business. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you could contact any one of them and that they know one of our, yeah. they, they're calling us by name or, uh, yeah. you know, whether it's a family member or Randy or John or Jason at the office. And that's what sort of sets us apart from our competition is people call in asking for a specific person right. instead of uh, getting a phone chain or something like that. That does happen on a few companies, Please, we yes. all know. <laughs> and I know Steve's gotten transferred uh, sales calls for other Steve's, but he knew the dealer and he had a great conversation. <laughs> Got it taken care of one way or another. Well, we're going to continue this conversation of course but we are going to take another quick break now if you happen to be near your phone you're an important part of this conversation and we'd love to hear from you the phone lines are open so call in with your questions that phone number is 877-731-6733 and also still remember we're looking to give away this otter box cooler with souk up swag inside to one lucky caller tonight so again that number 877-731-6733 And welcome back to Rural America Live with Sukup Manufacturing. We only have about 15 minutes left, so we would love to hear, hear your calls. Now, remember this OtterBox cooler, it is filled with Sukup swag. It's still looking for a new home. So give us a call and you could be the lucky winner tonight. So again, that number to call is 877-731-6733. Now, despite its size, family owned and operated Sukup Manufacturing Company is grateful to operate without a corporate feel. It's about creating relationships with its dealer network and also with its customers. From meaningful benefits to continuous efforts to improve quality of life right there at work, Sukup isn't satisfied with the status quo. Within the family business, you know, it's ingrained in us that um, all of us are, are vital to this company and we are extremely important piece of, of the business and I say the heartbeat of the company. Steve, Charles, Andy, Nick, and all of them always are constantly walking through the plant. They know all of us by name. They're always coming down asking how projects are going, uh, want to see updates on them, just ask you how life is going. Uh, it's nice to not be just another number. I've said that over and over again. Um, I don't I don't think there's too many companies out there that, that you can interact with the CEO and, and three generations of the family-owned company on, you know, on the daily and genuine conversation. So Sukup has a on-site medical clinic that we've partnered with Mercy One North Iowa. We're open five days a week and we thought that that was extremely important to have on site for our employees to receive convenience of care. We're in rural North Iowa um, and to allow employees to s walk across the parking lot to receive um, care um, is number one to us to keep employees mind, body and soul healthy overall. I think would be the relationships that I've been able to build here, uh, you know, just with outsourcing, but also too with the plant employees and just building that relationship, uh, the camaraderie and stuff that you build, just kind of the teamwork and just able to see, you know, everybody just more or less row in the same direction. Whether it be through uh, the, the, the medical center that we have here on site, uh, we're looking into daycare for, for uh, these families, and those are the challenges they're having too, to be able to go to work every day, and, and Sukups are looking into the future to see, hey, what can we do to maintain where we're at and to grow in the future? We take a look at, at our policies and procedures every year, and we decided that paid parental leave was something that we wanted to implement um, this year. And so that is an opportunity for both um, the mother and the father to take time off to care for um, a new loved one. And so we're excited to, to share that with our employees.
when the employees see something happen that's positive, you know, with changes and stuff on the floor, uh, you know, the employees are the ones that matter around here, and they're the ones that, you know, keep us all in business on that side. So just to see their morale and everything just be improved and, and be positive and upbeat on a day-to-day -day is, is kind of what, you know, drives me. If you're not uncomfortable, you're not growing. So I, I would challenge everyone to, to get uncomfortable. Um, that's really the key to success in my mind, is it's constantly evolving, learning, growing. Um, and there's opportunity for that here. As we continue to grow, um, you know, we have a vision of more diversity and understanding um, uh, each and every employee so we know uh, what we need to what we need to to bring here and what we what parts of not only the business but parts of our, our benefits. We want to be as much as we possibly can for each and every one of our employees knowing that they're all different. Um, offering a you know competitive salary and benefits and all of those things are 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 essential to making sure that people are happy. I can't it's the difference between a job and a career. You know, I, I can't even imagine what it would be like to have to go to work and be like, gosh, it's 7.30 in the morning right now. Uh, what am I going to do with the next eight hours of my day? As opposed to saying, I get to go to work. 20 years later, I'm still here. So, um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of opportunity for growth. Um, if, if you can dream it, I guess they're, they're willing to, to work with you and help you achieve it. So that's probably one of the, one of the greatest things about working here is if, if you want to progress, they're, they're there to help you. I get to look others in the eye and make a difference and also know that, um, you know, that our, that, our, that our folks know that they're being well taken care of and appreciated and, and put in a position that they can build a life, you know, and, and have the things that, that, that what we all consider to be our American dream, we want to do as much as we possibly can. That's why we have profit sharing. That's why we have, um, you know, a, a fully paid medical plan for our folks. You know, we, we want to make sure that this is a destination place to work. Doing good things for the, the folks that do good things for you, working in the working every day. It's that kind of nice to hear that kind of feedback there. No, it is that everybody enjoys coming to work, working together, yeah. and being challenged along the way. So as uh, progress can't be made without some challenges. That's right. So. I like that. Now with that, we do have the phone lines open. Let's go back to the phones. Eight seven 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 three one sixty seven thirty three. We have John from North Dakota. John, are you there? Hey guys. Hey, John, I got a little bit of good news for you. Oh. <laughs> you are our winner this evening for that new OtterBox cooler. So congratulations. Oh, well, thank you, guys. You're welcome. You've got a nice little swag there that uh, will come your direction. We have your phone number, so they'll reach out to you afterwards to make sure that you receive that. Now, you did call in. You had a question or comment, so go ahead with your thoughts. Yeah, uh, I was wondering if... Uh, if uh, your guys' uh, air dryers could run uh, remotely, uh, say through an app or on your phone, maybe. Yes, with, to tackle that. you can control your uh, dryers with your uh, cell phone. Uh, we, I know we have one customer that's controlling a, a dryer dryers that he has in three different counties uh, with his phone. There are a few. Uh, you can control it with your phone. We do limit that a little bit because we do want some uh, actual interaction when you got. Uh, fire and electricity and gas going on but uh there are you can't tell what's going on with each of your dryers now emily most recently you've been working on child care opportunities talk about how that came about well as you've heard we really look at every employee as them but also their family yeah. and wanting to support that and so in the past five years iowa has lost 33 percent of child care centers that was very concerning and the pandemic made it worse. So we circled our community members, our school, our local officials and said, how can we help? Just like we had address innovations in the engineering room, we took that to the community and uh, we're working together and we'll be opening up a child care center just down the street from us fall of 2024. That's perfect. I'm glad to hear that. I'm sure that uh, the local community has just been overjoyed. Yes, and we even already have a waiting list. Oh, wow. That definitely <laughs> is a good sign. Yes. <laughs> now, another project that you guys have been working on is these safety homes. And we have something to kind of explain that concept a little bit more. So let's go ahead and roll that.
the foundation of our company was really based on not just an invention, but uh, approach to life and that being faith-based. And to uh, be able to be working at our own family company and be able to take that faith culture and foundation and, and see the impact of not just our agricultural side of business, but then to see the impact around the world and how it expands the reach of our culture and our approach is just indescribable. My role originally, when the original safety director came to me and asked, he wanted to build a house out of a grain bin. I worked with him on basically things that are needed that we thought was requ required. I've built bins before. I've been born and raised on a farm, so I knew how hot it got in a grain bin. The heat shields, the ventilation, ballast boxes, uh, all the little components. Our first vision was a village of hope in, in Haiti with 48 homes. And we blew the doors off of that, and today we have over 500. We're shipping another container next week. It, it just keeps growing. The, one of the hardest things for a job like mine, if you will, is not ever having enough. There's always more need. And, and so the, the sky's the limit. I think the best part with Safety Homes is that you can see where God's moving. And we go where God's moving when it comes to Safety Homes, and that's been my favorite part of the journey. The Sukup family has meant so much to us as part of our ministry as a whole, with, especially with the Safety Home, and to get to know them and, and meet them in their heart to not have a business alone, but to change the world with things they do. It makes me feel good. Um, the fact that I kind of laughed at this right off the bat, turning a grain bin into a house, um, well, I'm, I'm not laughing anymore. It's this is this is real. So. <laughs>as you can see there just a little over a year ago they had the opportunity to be part of a rescue mission for folks now also that was focused on haiti rescue mission also tying into the ukraine you guys are doing great things well we are very honored to be part of something like this and the safety home project really did um, get us ready to just jump in and say yes, like Steve did with Safety Homes. Uh -huh. And we have a joint manufacturing plant in Ukraine. So when the invasion happened, we, we were deeply connected with people over there and wanted to help. So Steve, along with our CEO of Sukup Europe, jumped in and we connected. And within you know, eight hours, they had a coach bus, two Danish-Ukrainians picking up Jens along the way to the Polish border. Uh -huh. And it... It's resulted in helping 64 refugees to get their way to safely to Denmark. Many have jobs, homes, yeah. livelihoods there, and it's all because of our work with Sukup Europe's personnel and, and the culture that we've been able to create in Iowa. It's been amazing to see how they were, were able to respond to the Ukrainian refugees, and it's they're the ones that deserve all the credit for that. That's still pretty cool. It got to make you feel pretty good. Now, we've only got about... 40 seconds or so. Close things out with some final thoughts for us, Steve. Well, we, we enjoy coming to work every day. Uh, mentioned we've got three generations. We're the largest family-owned uh, operating uh, grain bin company in the, in the world, and uh, we want to keep, keep doing it. It's part of agriculture. We're making a difference out there. And what do you think your dad would say to see all the, the big things, the giving things that you guys have done? Well, we're just keeping on with the tradition. Yeah. So take an idea. Don't worry about if it doesn't work or not, and just try the next thing. Even if it doesn't work, there's a lesson to be learned along Build the way. Build a prototype. <laughs> Where's the website? Where can folks find more information? Uh, Sukup.com. All right. Well, that's easy enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all for thank sitting you. down and joining us. We thank certainly you. appreciate your time. Again, thank you also for joining us here for Rural, Amer Rural America Live with Sukup Manufacturing based out of Iowa. Join us again, of course, next time around right here on RFD-TV, Rural America's most important network. <laughs>